Hello and welcome to our week eight virtual classroom. So I am in our course and I am heading over to our modules and we are just plugging away here and we are in week eight, data preparation and basic analysis and data analysis too, describing, explaining and evaluating. So this week we have two chapters to go over and we have a discussion, which is a social science um, explanation regarding religion and happiness. Our week eight application assignment is preparing a bivariate table and this assignment for your virtual classroom will be in here. Um, and so this video will be in here and throughout the video, I will start going over, um, you know, certain things to to like prompts for you to answer so that you can put it right here in the virtual classroom. So let's look at our application assignment first and then we'll look at our um, items. So this is a step one. We're using the data in tables below, right? And then you see table 10, um, 6 in chapter 10, and then we're going to prepare tables 11, 15, A and B here, as you can see. Um, and you're going to show two versions, one that just has the tally marks, as you see here, yes and no, and the total sample size N here. And then, um, and then you're going to create a binary variable for happy by setting happy to be one, where happy one is very happy and happy zero is happy two, which is pretty happy and happy three is not too happy. So you're gonna split the variable Marshall into two categories, like married and single, where if marital is one and then single is all others except missing, and you're gonna call that variable married. And so that is what we call a dummy variable or a bivariate where you it's either setting zero or one, so you can either be married or not be married, right? Um, and that is what you're showing. And then you're gonna summarize the relationship between these two. So here we're showing you just the actual numbers, and here we're showing you percentages, and then we're showing you percentages if you're happy or not. So, um, so you're gonna discuss all of that. And why do the instructions say to use column totals as a percentage base? You're going to give your rationale as to why you believe that is the case. And then in step four, you're going to discuss the relationship between married and happy. And, um, and do you think it's st statistically significant? Why? And remember, it is statistically significant and pretty strong in our total sample. You're going to put all these in one document and make sure that you submit your assignment and then also make sure that you're writing an APA format. Um, I noticed that, you know, make sure that you have at least one citation, make sure that your submission is double spaced. Some of you just lose a point or two here and there based on that, but no big deal. Most of you do do the entire um, content. You pretty much respond to everything. Just make sure that you're responding with enough analysis and critical thinking that you're using your explanations, you're explaining, especially when it's asking you about relationships or summaries, make sure that you're giving that in complete and full details. So that is your week eight application assignment. And um, you will see that here, and that is due on December 5th. And then we are going to move on to our two PowerPoints here. And let me download these here, so that way I can go back and we will go through these. Let's come back into here and make sure we do this. All right. So here we go. Let's start with, let's see here, pulling a curtain of darkness to reveal a happier world. How nice is that, All right? So keep in mind that I will be giving you your prompts for your virtual um, classroom eight assignment here. So we are talking about data preparation and basic analysis. What makes some people happier than others? So recently we have a New York Times and they ran an article by David Shimmer and it was Yale's most popular class ever, happiness. About 1,200 students, which is nearly one fourth 
of Yale University's undergraduates, so 25% of Yale University's undergraduate enrolled during the spring of 2018. And um, you can look in our textbook to see one um, student's explanation for the course's popularity, right? So to achieve happiness, researchers Rizvin and Hosin report from their review of recent research, humans try various routes, but religiously is claimed to be a technique to attain purpose in life and internal peace where ultimate, ultimately leads to happiness. So here is your first question that you're going to add to your assignment for your virtual classroom. Is there a relationship between happiness and religion? What do you think? What are your thoughts about a relationship between happiness and religion? So we're going to begin by examining some associations using a variable reflecting respondent, like respondents state of happiness, right? So when they replied to the survey, how happy were they? And then we're going to look at some just data preparation and analysis aspects as well. So the general social survey is a large United States national survey that's repeated every two years and it's about the attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors of adults. So in 2016, the general social survey includes the following questions about happiness. Taken all together, how would you say things are these days? Would you say that you are very happy, pretty happy, or not too happy? <clears throat> so the second part of your assignment for this virtual classroom is to answer this question. So taken all together, how would you say things are these days? Would you say that you are very happy, pretty happy, or not too happy? I will say I am very happy. And we see here that 31% of those, so we have 2,859 respondents and everybody answered the question, which is great. All the percentages equal 100 and we have 31.4% say that they were very happy, where 54.7% say they were pretty happy. And then we have almost 14% that said they're not too happy. So I hope you are in the very happy or pretty happy area here. So that's your second part of this assignment for our chapter 10. So when we look at um, table 10.2, um, which we have here on the next slide, we'll see that in a minute, right? Um, we show that people who report no religious preference, the column labeled none, are less likely to say that they are very happy than are those um, who report a preference for Protestant, Catholic, or Jew. Other religion does not fit a pattern. So if we look at this, we see that in the none, we only have, we have most are pretty happy, but they're not, they're not very happy in the none, right? And then we also don't see it, but here we see if you report you're Protestant, you're pretty happy. You're in the all in the 30s, um, in your Jew, if you're Catholic or Jewish, um, so you're very happy. So if you don't mind sharing your religion, then the third part of this assignment is where do you fall in? So for example, I was very happy and I am Catholic. So I would be in this 37.9% or of these 648 people. So if you feel comfortable and you're willing to share, then where would you be? So what you told us your happiness earlier, not too happy, pretty happy, or very happy. Um, and then are you Protestant, Catholic, Jew, or other, or not? It could be none too. Or if you want to not, you can just abstain from answering that. But that is the other part of this assignment. Okay, so how do we read the table to know this, right? So we're looking at the title, then we're following past research and we look, we select happiness as the dependent variable, right? The dependent variable is placed first in the title and then we follow by an independent variable, which in this case is your type of religion. Not all published tables typically follow this convention, but it does simplify when we're reading tables and that's what's used in our textbook. And also that is what I use when I publish manuscripts, right? When I publish papers. So if there is a control variable, it's usually stated in the title. So here we have type of religion, which was our independent variable. Happiness is our dependent variable. 
So then we're comparing the 27.5% here in the last column that's labeled none to the other percentages in bold, right? And we see here other and none are our lowest ones, right? Whereas um, Jew is very happy and very closely followed is Catholic and very happy and Protestant and very happy. And so the percentages identified with a named religion category in the very happy row are similar to each other, and the differences are statistically significant. So this GSS data lends some support for the findings about happiness and religion. The only one that doesn't really follow is this other religion here. That might we might have to do a follow-up survey to see how that maybe to see all the others and see if we can do a cross sample or see if we can further narrow that down to see all of the different types of religion within that other that might just be too much of a hodgepodge if you will or there's no real patterns that are emerging from that so but based on this table we can't tell whether people become happy because they are religious or happy people become religious because they are happy so we don't know what the cause and what is the effect in this case and that's an important principle we always want to question the causal order of variables whenever you see a report of a relationship so sometimes there is no ambiguity so such that the relationship let's say between gender and religious affiliation or religious affiliation you really can't cause your gender but very often there is some definite ambiguity as in this example right of happiness and religious affiliation so here we need some time ordered observations and then we also want to consider some confounding variables possible alternative explanations to happiness that is not necessarily religion so perhaps religious people develop more extensive social networks with their church members and it is the social contacts that affect their happiness so the next part of your assignment is to define time-ordered observations and also to give an example of confounding variables for our happiness and our religion not the one stated here so what other factors or what other confounding variables might provide an alternative explanation to happiness that doesn't really relate to religion so that is the next part of your assignment here all right so now we have a tally sheet. So when we're looking at a bivariate table, we construct at least one bivariate table without using a computer. First, we just do a count or a tally of the respondents of the responses, then we convert that tally to marks to frequencies, and then we calculate percentages. So this table below shows a completed tally sheet for sex and degree. And we have a subsample of 50 cases from the GSS survey. So you see it's either male or female and whether they have less than a high school, if they're a high school graduate and they have an associate or junior college degree, they have a bachelor's or if they have a graduate degree. And then after this tally is completed for all the cases, we want to count the marks in each cell and then enter the totals into the cell of a new tally sheet. So since this is a subset, uh, a subsample, and it's small, it's only 50 cases, we want to collapse degree into two categories in this new tally sheet, high school or less, and junior college degree or higher. And we're going to call this new variable degree, and this gives us a two by two table, right? Two sexes, male and female, and two types of degree, high school or less, junior college or higher degree. And this is what you see here. So now we've taken these tally marks and we, where we've had five different areas here with still the same two sexes, male and female, but now we've actually done a two by two and given you the high school or less and the junior college or higher degree. So we've taken the tally marks and we've just converted them into numbers. Perfect. So, be, so then our last step is we're going to calculate percentages for the tables. And there are two rules that we need to follow. The first rule is we want to calculate percentages within categories of the independent variable. And then once we follow that rule, then we want to do rule two, which is we want to translate into compare percentages across categories 
of the independent variable. If we don't follow rule two, then we might have a bogus interpretation of the table. So we want to calculate percentages within the categories of the independent variable, and that requires that we look at the table and decide which variable is the independent variable and observing whether it is the column or the row um, variable. So rule one eliminates row totals for example, in table eight, and you also just get a grand total. So the last part of your assignment for this is to tell us which of the three tables you like. So do you prefer the tally sheet? Do you prefer the counts here, just basic counts, or do you prefer the percentages? So in my case, I tend to prefer the percentages, then I go, I work backwards. I like the percentages, then I like the counts, and lastly, I like the tally sheets. So the last part of this assignment is to detail which of these three tables do you like the best and explain why. The tally sheet or the um, degrees or the, or the counts, excuse me, and or the percentages, okay? So that is this first part of the assignment for chapter 10. Now let's go into chapter 11. Let's see what we have here. Let's put this in slideshow mode. So here we have a man and a woman that is meditating on a hilltop in Ukraine. That looks pretty cold, right? Definitely looks pretty cold there. And that's probably how it feels here where I am at. I am in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So not in sunny California where probably all of you are at. But um, so let's start. We are now looking at chapter 11, which is data analysis two, which is describing, explaining, and evaluating the data that you are presented with. So many studies suggest that people who report an affiliation with a religion are happier than people who say they have no religious affiliation. So an important principle is always to question the causal order of the variables whenever you see a report of a relationship. You also want to consider what other aspects of people and their social lives might also affect happiness. So that is the first part of your chapter 11 assignment, which is what other aspects of people and their social lives might also affect happiness. Some ideas that come to mind are financial needs, if they're sick, if they just got some great news, if they got promoted, there are so many variables that can impact and affect a person's happiness. So that is what you want to do here is make sure that you um, know what aspects of a person's life and their social lives might also affect their happiness. So we look at examples in this case of not only bivariate but also trivariate tables. So the first example, we're going to present a bivariate table, obviously, like we were discussing before, between happiness and religion, both two category variables. And now we want to control for gender clarifies the relationship between happiness and religion. So we're going to look at separately for men and for women, and that's going to be shown in the trivariate table. So let's start looking at this. First, if we start with the first table, 11.1, .1, we're gonna look at the title and note that we are specifying the type of variable by its placement in the title. So our dependent variable is going to be happy and that is gonna be judged by our independent variable of religion. And here we see happy by religion, and this is our GSS data. And so we have the happiness, they're either not happy or very happy, and their religion is known as none or Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish altogether. And we see that 33.5% um, of those that have identified with Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish are very happy. And whereas only 27.5% um, are very happy if they have no religious affiliation. And we see in this case, we have a total of 2,686 respondents with 2,067 of them actually identifying with a religion. So this is our bivariate table here of happiness by religion. 
So then we want to include one more variable in, a, in our analysis, known as a control variable. This result is our trivariate. So now we have a three variable table. And when we look at this table, we're going to see that we're specifying the type of variable again by its placement in the title. So we're still looking at our dependent variable as being happiness, and we're looking at it now by an independent variable noting religion. And then our third or control variable is the gender. And that's going to give us two other variables. So we're going to look at now happiness by religion and by gender, our trivariate table. So once we do that, we're going to note the critical importance of extending our analysis beyond just a bivariate or two variable relationship is revealed by the new results that emerge for the association between happiness and religion by statistically controlling for gender. So let's take a look at our table here. So we have happiness by religion and by gender based on our GSS data. So we still have all of our variables here. And so again, we're looking at men and women. So now we've divided it. And here we see, oops, here we see 31.3% um, of women are very happy if they are affiliated with the Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish religion, whereas 36.3% here are um, of men are happiest. And then we have none that are still very happy with no religion at 29%, and we have a little bit lower here at 26.2% of men that aren't identified with a religion that are considered very happy. So your second part of this assignment is to note how do you interpret the results of this trivariate table? Happiness by religion, by gender. Do you see it that men are more happy when they are associated with a religion or and then women tend to be happier whether they are in a not in a religion interpret the results as you see them here and you can do it by just either happiness you can do it by religion you can do it by gender you can combine all three variables you can focus on any one of the variables if you just want to focus on happiness or religion or gender however you like but that part of the assignment is for you to go ahead and interpret the results of table 11.2 happy by religion by gender on this gss data so here's the key to understanding our trivariate tables like we have here, right? We have partial relationships that we see between happiness and gender in each of the other two partial tables, right? Men and women. And uh, can, and it really can't be due to gender, right? Because gender is your constant. It's what's controlled. That's what you're seeing. So you are either born a man or a woman, but you know you can choose your religion and you can choose your state of happiness. So there are no women in the left side partial table and no men in the right side partial table. So the partial table that you see is what you're focusing on is just religion and happiness. So here we have um, what is known as a statistical interaction. So this is an example of a statistical interaction and the next portion of your assignment for this virtual classroom assignment is to define what is a statistical interaction. And you see there the pages where you can find that information in our textbook. So if the dependent variable is numeric, if we're looking at time or income, um, and the independent variable is categorical, like gender or race, a useful device is to calculate the dependent variable, the mean score for each category. So we would see the mean income, let's say, for gender or the mean income by gender or race. So that is what we're doing. And a mean score is just our average for each of the categories of the independent variable. 
So here's a simple path diagram of a hypothesis that has a numerical and a categorical variable. So right, gender to income. And so um, we're going to explore another table that's going to show us an example where we're using annual income and income is the dependent variable and then gender is the independent variable. And this includes only people who are working full time or working part time. So that's the disclaimer of our data. So the variable income we're going, is defined by taking the midpoints of the dollar intervals in the GSS variable, and we're going to name that RINCOM16. So that's our variable name. So what we reveal is a substantial difference between income levels, our average annual income of men and women. And we note this is in 2016 with men earning $65,595 on average, whereas women were earning $43,316 on average. So we see a variation or a disparity of $22,279. So what do you think this difference is attributable to? So the next part of your assignment is why do you think women are paid so much less than men? What are some attributes or instances or variables that could impact what, how much a man makes and how much a woman makes? If you can answer that in your virtual classroom, that would be smashing. So here we see the tables. And so we see that we have 682 men that um, provided this annual income of the $65,595. And then we see that 707 women provided an annual income of the 43,316. And we see our p-value is um, 0.0001. So what we are seeing here in this table is a sample means, right? But is, is, is it conceptually compatible to what we talked about earlier when we were using percentages in the chapter? Our table here shows a bivariate association between gender and income, right? Income is a numeric number or a ratio variable. And then what we had previously in the very first table that we looked at was a bivariate association as well, but those were two categorical var variables, right? Religion and happiness. Whereas here we have a numerical variable of our annual income. So gender obviously is not the only variable that can affect income. So what is one other variable that might account for the gender differences in income? So again, if you can answer this as part of your virtual classroom, what is one other variable that might account for the gender differences in income levels? We could see here we have another possible variable is work status, which is defined in our analysis as a nominal variable with two categories, right? Working full time or working part time. So let's state our hypothesis here. Men earn more than women because they are more likely to work full time than women are. So now if we revise this hypothesis, it implies that the gender differences in earnings is shown, that is shown in table 11.7 disappears if we can control for the work status, right? If you do work part-time, you're more likely to earn a lot less money than if you work full-time. So the hypothesis is that work status, is the reason for this income disparity between men and women is not supported. Instead, let's look at the following table as an example of statistical interaction or statistical specification. 
So keep in mind that our textbook does provide a discussion of specification and other types of three variable relationships in those pages 258 to 262. So as part of your virtual classroom, make sure you review those pages. And again, just briefly note what statistical interaction or statistical specification is as described in the textbook on those pages. So here we see that we have our, we've added now, we still have gender, right? And we, but now we've added um, our work status. So yes, you see that um, 598 males work full-time as opposed to 84 males that work part-time. And then we see $51,670 is earned by 524 females, whereas 183 females earn $22,704 on a part-time basis. So on a part-time basis, it seems females earn more, whereas on a full-time basis, we see that males earn more. So for full-time workers, the bivariate relationship is nearly the same as it was in our previous table. But now for the part-time workers, we see the partial relationship is much smaller than we noted in our bivariate relationship. And it's reversed, women make more than men. So we also talk about in this chapter, regression analysis. And its extensions are designed for research involving what's known as a simultaneous analysis of many variables. So for example, here we would test the relationship between wages and gender, controlling for age and possibly years of schooling or education. And the chapter also provides a brief introduction to how to use these statistical tests like the chi-squared test for a bivariate table, the F test, the T test, how to apply it to the analysis of the means and the F test and the associated T test and how to apply that to regression analysis. So all of these statistical tests provide us a method for making inferences, right? We're able to infer from a sample to its population based on our probability calculations. And we have reached the end of our chapter and the end of our virtual classroom for week eight. Thanks for watching.